So my name is uh, Sebastian Long. I introduced myself already, I guess. Uh, I work for a company called Play Research in Brighton, and I want to talk to you today about careers in games user research. Um, but you're not just hearing from me today, you're hearing from lots of lovely people who kindly gave me some insight into their hiring practices at their various companies. And uh, also there's going to be some data in here from a recent salary survey uh, run on games user researchers. Uh, all about how to forge a career in games user research. Uh, so we've got quite a lot to cover in the next 15 minutes, but really I want to uh, outline lots of different things. But who, who games user researchers are, uh, how they get hired, the hiring process, uh, and why. Why are some people hired over others? What makes a good games user researcher or a hireable games user researcher? So this talk is specifically aimed at uh, entry level, uh, junior and mid level researchers, um, but there's hopefully insights regardless of your seniority and your experience. So, a recent uh, salary survey, uh, in, indeed in also included some information about people's academic backgrounds. Um, it's quite common knowledge, I suppose, that games user research has always been quite closely tied to academia, uh, but now we really know what that looks like. Uh, according to the survey respondents, greater than 90% have a bachelor's degree or higher, uh, and around 60% have a master's or a PhD, uh, and that's researchers from all over the world. Most commonly, those topics are psychology, or the derivatives thereof, and or user experience, HCI type fields. Other fields are covered, covered. There's all sorts of people with all sorts of backgrounds, but the psychology and UX cover most of the academic backgrounds of the researchers that filled in the survey. Okay. So the rest of this talk uh, is about making yourself hireable and getting hired in the games user research domain. Uh, and all of this, a lot of the content here is relevant to all games user experience in all of its various forms, including eye tracking experts and biometrics and all sorts. I focus mainly on playtesting and games user researchers, uh, as that's the most common role. And it's also, we have the best data on it. Um, Otherwise, are less common and perhaps a little bit less well-defined. So this talk it really isn't about giving you the answers. It's not a cheat sheet uh, for getting you hired by any of these companies. Um, but it is about helping you understand potential weaknesses as, as part of your application, potential weaknesses in, um, that you have and you could potentially address. Uh, also to better understand the expectations of hiring professionals, both HR and researchers themselves, uh, and also our needs uh, as people that have that hire games user researchers. Okay, so we'll start with the typical hiring process then. What uh, process is undertaken to hire you as a games user researcher? Well, it starts off with a CV and cover letter review, of course, uh, and then one or two telephone or Skype interviews covering various questions. I'll get to those in a moment. Most games user research hiring processes include a game review task of some sort. And then lastly, between one and three in-person interviews. So I'd like to share some advice for each of those hiring stages, some common mistakes that the kind respondents to my questions uh, answered, uh, and also some advice on how you can uh, address any potential weaknesses. Okay, common mistakes then. So, CV and covering letter. Your first impressions, CV and covering letter are your first impressions, and they should absolutely be flawless. Uh, communication is a key skill of games user researchers, as we heard from Nicholas's talk. Uh, it's a lot about communication, uh, and attention to detail are key skills. Um, by far the com most common filtering point, the reason that most people are not brought forward into the rest of the hiring process, uh, according to my respondents, is that CV and initial impressions. Uh, as hirers, we're interested in you having a passion for research. So just saying, I love to play games, is not enough. You need to have a passion for research and the things that come with that, uh, not necessarily a passion for playing games, although that is also key. Highlight your transferable skills, and the next one down, the CV reader isn't necessarily a researcher. The first person to read your CV or covering letter when you're applying for a games user experience job isn't necessarily a researcher. So you should be tailoring your CV and covering letter accordingly. Yes, include your experience, but make sure it's jargon-free. Make sure that it's absolutely key 
what your transferable skills are, especially if you haven't had any games user research experience, uh, but you want to bring in transferable skills from other roles you've had in the past. Your CV and covering letter should also be position specific. Don't reuse stuff from other jobs. In games user research is specific enough, you ought to be writing a specific CV. Okay, you've made it to the next stage of the interview. First of all, be up to date with trends. So when you're going through your interview, make sure you've swatted up on acronyms, make sure you've swatted up on the challenges that games user research is facing today, the current trends in games user research. Um, be ready to talk about best practices and your experience and your opinion on games that you're currently playing, and be ready to talk about them in detail. You will be asked to give, uh, often asked to give uh, advice to the, uh, about the games you're playing or give your opinion about the games you're playing, and that's going to be carefully considered for, uh, to assess your analytical technique. Be ready for some difficult questions. I've put some on the slide here that my uh, survey respondents said were some of the most difficult. What makes games user research different? What are the specific challenges of games user research? You will be asked this, or a similar question. Between the differences between traditional UX and games to assess your understanding of what it really means to be a games user researcher. Outline the study you run to explore X, X being perhaps a hypothetical situation or maybe uh, one of those examples of good or bad practice you've identified in the games you're currently playing. To assess uh, how good you are at reasoning, uh, to see if you have an understanding of the type of sample sizes that would be needed for certain types of study, uh, depending on what you're assessing. Number three, what are your personal research weaknesses? I think that speaks for itself. But it really is asking, how well do you understand the space, the games user research space? How well do you understand the methodologies available, and how does your experience cross over with that? Number four, why this company and not elsewhere? The interview is, asked, is interested in whether you've given consideration for the quirks and the challenges that are specific to the companies you're applying for. That could be an enormous company, it could be a tiny company or a medium-sized company. Have you thought as an applicant about what that means about your day-to-day -day work? what that means in terms of the number of games you might work on, the type of methodologies you might be running. Why this company and not elsewhere? Lastly, how might you approach someone that disagrees with your findings? And I'm gonna come back to this a little bit later on as well, but soft skills, interpersonal skills, persuasion and communication skills are gonna be tested at every single stage of those four stages. Okay. So most reviews, uh, sorry, most uh, applications contain a game review task of some sort, and it varies in terms of the complexity of that, uh, when it's exactly introduced into the, into the process of hiring, but most games user researcher roles include it. There are so there's some advice here, based on my survey respondents and their hiring practices. Things you should make sure you do or don't do. First of all, perhaps most importantly of all, focusing on fact and not opinion. Focusing on facts restricts what you can talk about in this review, your, this review of a game. So you'll be asked to play a game or of your choice perhaps, or perhaps one that's given to you, perhaps a part of a game, and give some, uh, identify some issues and communicate them back to the interviewer. Focusing on fact restricts what you can talk about. And I'm not going to give too much more than that, but be thinking very carefully about the types of issues which you can communicate with certainty and with uncertainty, and how you can talk about them. Ensure you examine the root causes of issues. Have you just identified a high-level issue, or have you really understood or showed understanding of what the cause of that issue is? Not forgetting to highlight good practice. It's a key skill, identifying good practice in games. What works well and why? And how can the game use that understanding, use that knowledge to do better in other areas of the game? Lastly, consider the audience of your findings. Are you talking yeah, and giving advice to a games user researcher in this kind of role play? Or are you talking to a designer? Because you will need to cater the way that you communicate 
the things that you find. So in this little mock review, consider your audience and how persuaded they may need to be, the acronyms they might understand, the language that they might use to help communicate your issue. All right, everybody agreed that I spoke to. You should be writing and practicing these skills and writing reviews in your own time for your own personal growth. Capitalize on opportunities for practical experience and getting feedback on that. That could be student groups, it could be um, local game designers, it could be anyone, but capitalize on experience for getting feedback. Perhaps putting your reviews online and asking for people to give feedback on them. Okay, need to be a bit faster. Here are some of the hard skills that my survey respondents, or hiring managers and so forth, said were particularly valuable. So be considering how you can practice these and how you can develop these, uh, particularly Programming, so Visual Basic, so not programming games necessarily, but programming uh, little spreadsheets and macros and tools to help you analyze data faster, big data, which is relevant to the second point, and lots of other things relevant to the, to the role. But soft skills was also a key reason for applicants not making it further. So we'll be considering how you could also be practicing those. All right, quick shout out to the ways of developing your skills. Further reading and reading around the domain is now easier than ever. Um, lots and lots of different resources online, um, which you can mostly find via the Games User Research SIG website, but also has a mentoring scheme. So shout out to Steve at the back, on the back right, who the mentoring scheme he's running is absolutely awesome. Definitely, if you're interested in getting uh, mentorship or feedback on your game reviews, be signing up to that. And indeed, if you have time, also consider being a mentor. It's very rewarding. Okay, finally, the salary survey, of course, re revealed details on salaries. What can you expect to earn as a games user researcher? Now, I want to be very clear with this. This data averages European games user research salaries, and they're broken down into chunks here. With zero to two years of experience, pounds, euros, and dollars, and then different levels of experience. And at the bottom, just for interest, uh, is the most recent uh, data from Develop Magazine, uh, who gave average salaries for alternative domains and alternative fields. So a games coder, games QA tester, I know that they don't include years of seniority. I was muttering, I can tell you're all interested in this one. All right, it's a really quick talk from me. Um, I would like to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Kelly Boudreau, uh, who is going to talk to you a little bit more about the crossover of games and academia and her, the wonderful work that she's doing. So please fully help me introduce uh, Dr. Kelly.